Good evening. Welcome to the December 2nd, 2009 meeting of the Murfreesboro Planning Commission. We have a quorum present, so I'll call the meeting to order at this time. First item on tonight's agenda is to reapprove the November 4th, 2009 regular uh, meeting minutes. Are there any additions or corrections to those minutes? If none, I'll declare them approved as submitted. We have two public hearings scheduled for this evening, the first of which is a zoning ordinance amendment regarding Section 34, Floodplain Zoning, Planning Staff Applicant. Ms. Ely, good evening. Thank you. Good evening, Planning Commission. And staff would like to say a special happy birthday to Chairman Lamb tonight. We're glad to be here and celebrating your birthday with these public hearings. Um, the first public <laughs> hearing tonight is to consider amendments to the Murfreesboro Zoning Ordinance as regards uh, floodplain zoning. In June of this year, representatives of FEMA came to our community and they did what they call a community assessment visit and they evaluated our floodplain management program. After that visit, they did recommend some amendments that we should make to our zoning ordinance to maintain our eligibility in the National Flood Insurance Program. Um, what you have before you in your packets are proposed changes that they have recommended as drafted by our legal department. The City of Murfreesboro has included all the changes that FEMA uh, recommended except for one, which is we, we recommend that you maintain the base floor elevation, the lowest habitable, habitable floor to be at least one foot above the flood elevation rather than three as recommended by FEMA. I did put these amendments on the Murfreesboro webpage on the internet and um, I did send an email out to some local stakeholders asking them to review them if they have any comments to go ahead and provide that to staff and we would, we would um, listen to what they have to say. You should conduct a public hearing to consider these text amendments to our zoning ordinance. If you have any questions either before or after, I'd be glad to answer them. And I did want to point out that the City Council has already scheduled this item for a public hearing on December 17th of this month and this year. And so those members of the City Council will see this in just a couple of weeks as well. Okay. Any comments or questions? I'm assuming okay. that FEMA is okay with the one foot versus feet, three feet with respects to the first floor elevation? Yes, sir. It's our understanding that that is uh, permissible under the flood insurance program. It's just a desire that the communities have three foot. It gives them a little bit more okay. free board, if you will. But it is our understanding of the law that they operate under that the one foot for uh, space for human habitation uh, is adequate and that at or above as we currently regulate for commercial is also acceptable. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, before, <clears throat> before I open the public hearing, I'll briefly go over our rules. We'll open the public hearing, ask anybody to come forward that would like to speak either for or against this proposal. When you come to the microphone, please state your name and give your address if you would, please. Keep your comments to no more than three minutes and make all your comments and questions to the Planning Commission. All that being said, I'll open the public hearing at this time. Ask anybody to come forward that would like to speak. <laughs> Nobody? Okay. In that case, I'll close this public hearing. What are the wishes of this commission? Mr. Chairman, I recommend approval. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. <clears throat> the second public hearing is a zoning ordinance amendment regarding section 7, 18, and 27 regarding site plan review enhancements and uh, planning staff is happening. Ms. Logan, good evening. Good evening. Thank you, Chairman Lamb. I'm not sure I'll be able to follow up the comedic wonders of Ms. Ely, but <laughs> we'll try. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and the first item, or this next item before you tonight, is um, a proposed site plan enhancements, and it would affect sections 7, 18, and 27 of the zoning ordinance as it relates to site plans. Um, these enhancements are in response to what is seemingly the desire of the Planning Commission and the City <coughs> Council 
to um, enhance the quality of the standards of development within the city of Murfreesboro while also looking at avenues to move away from the plan development zoning um, that has been um, a fashion of late. In the last few years, the plan development zoning has been implemented as a way to try to dictate at the zoning level um, the type of development that would be received within a um, certain area. And um, while we are now finding that there sometimes can occur problems with that as the plans are not specific enough or that the plans become um, unreachable or unattainable for um, building later on as they move through the process. Um, and we've um, experienced that some during this economy. However, we also wanted to try to find ways to increase um, the quality of development and also to maintain the level and the standard of development that has been occurring in the city of Murfreesboro. Um, and using, of course, some of, the, some of the items that we find currently in the gateway. Um, the additions that are being proposed tonight in the site plan enhancements include the addition of a preliminary photometric plan. Um, it would not be a full photometric plan at the planning commission stage. It would be evaluated at staff as final photometric plan <coughs> at the um, building permit stage. It would be evaluated by the planning staff at that time. Um, also, the requirement to submit architectural elevations with the site plans. Again, it wouldn't be full architectural plans such as mechanical, electrical, plumbing, et cetera. It would just be a rendering picture, some type of photo or depiction showing the exterior of the proposed plans for the building. Um, as well as also um, codifying some of the landscaping requirements um, or wishes and requests that the Planning Commission has so desired to see, such as foundation plannings at the base of the building and also landscaping around mechanical units and unsightly um, necessities. I mean, there's, you can't avoid the fact that sometimes you have to have things such as transformers, backflow preventers, et cetera, on site. And so trying to screen those in an, in an avenue that is in keeping with the um, site, but also understanding that those are necessities that are required for commercial um, opportunities out there. So that is the gist of what we've done. In addition, we've also reworded the site plan review checklist to try to make it a little more user friendly, easier for the design professionals to utilize, a little more explanatory to the design professionals as well as taking some of our standard comments that they get every month in their staff comments and putting those in the checklist form so to try to take some of that redundancy out. Um, I know that they sometimes get the same staff comment, standard staff comments every month and that those standard staff comments have grown over the years um, as certain things have been implemented, even new laws from the state of Tennessee um, et cetera, you know, when they passed the, the Cable Act, um, that became another standard staff comment. Just trying to add some of the things like that to the site plan checklist to try to reduce some of that for our design professionals. Um, we've sent around the proposed site plan enhancements for review by several members of the community, including local engineering firms um, and developers within the community, um, and have tried to incorporate and listen to their comments and incorporate it as part of the designs tonight. Um, I think that we still probably have a couple areas that will need to be reviewed closer in terms of maybe um, the method for foundation plannings, maybe not the need for foundation planning so much as how we actually accomplish the, the way, right way to go about foundation plannings. I'm not really sure that we found the exact way that we want to go with that. but. Um, we still want to have the public hearing tonight open it up to allow people the opportunity to participate and provide their opinion and um, information as to how it relates to this ordinance. And then the Planning Commission should conduct a public hearing and then we'll go from there as to what actions should be taken. Um, Mr. Adelot may have additional comments to make prior to opening the public hearing. Mr. Adelot. Well, actually, I think Ms. Logan did a very good job of explaining what we're talking about tonight. Uh, I think that I'd like to wait till after uh, the comments from the public and then finish up with uh, maybe some staff recommendations. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Strait, a lot. If there's no other questions by members of the Planning Commission, I'll open the public hearing and ask anybody to come forward that would like to speak. Good evening, Chairman Lamb, Commission, staff, Joe Swanson, 730 Middle Tennessee Boulevard. Um, I'm here in several capacities as a developer, residential and commercial uh, and industrial, uh, builder and developer. Uh, one of the things that uh, I want to express is our appreciation in staff contacting those individuals who have a stake in this uh, uh, procedure uh, to come up and speak with you. Also, 
Uh, this process should help landowners promote their property and, the and put people back to work in our community, which helps our community, gives us some direction. Uh, the site plan review enha enhancements should help in the planning process and adjust the rigidity of the plan developments, which, as you know, has been uh, very popular of late. And I think some of the restrictions or maybe the, the rigidity of those uh, developments have uh, proved to be somewhat unattainable or hard to achieve at this date. Um, the Rough County Home Builders Association Government Affairs Committee, which I serve on, is in favor of this process and looking forward to review the site plan, review enhancements, and getting back with staff with our comments. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Swanson. Would anybody else like to speak? I'm John Harney here uh, tonight to, to make two or three comments and to follow up on something that uh, Mr. Swanson said and Ms. Logan has said both. Before I get started, I too would like to congratulate Mr. Lamb on his birthday, though. <laughs> uh, I've been here before this body in, in a lot of times in the past uh, as an owner-developer, but even more times as a broker representing a property owner that has a piece of property that they have realized they want to sell they realize that the present zoning of the property is not the highest and best use, uh, doesn't even reflect what the master land use plan of the city would have for that particular property. In the past few years, the, the um, leaning has been, uh, like Mr. Swanson said and Ms. Logan referred to, that uh, it has been the attitude that there'd be no straight zoning. It would all have to go through as PUDs, where you've got to be very definitive on what the buildings look like, the exact layout of the property, uh, a lot of details. I think as this document is getting enhanced and improved, I would love to think that going forward we could use this as a better guideline to make sure that we, in result, we get a good product, but maybe wouldn't have to force people to create a plan book for something that they don't know who the end user is, and possibly, um, in many cases, when they get it zoned with all these restrictions, uh, uh, in result, when somebody comes along to buy it, they've got to change it because it doesn't meet their needs. So I think the staff, and, and like uh, Joe said, the staff has been good to contact a lot of us in the industry, get input from us. Uh, you've got a good document here, but I'd hope as we could move forward, we could let that be the leveling playing field where it wouldn't cause people to have to spend several, several thousand dollars creating a plan book, a PUD, that may not fit when the actual user comes to the property and buys it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harney. Anybody else? Matt Taylor of SEC at 850 Middle Tennessee Boulevard here. Um, we, as uh, one of the local engineers in town, would like to voice that uh, we do support this as well. We've, we've uh, talked with staff uh, several times about it. We'd like to see a couple of tweaks just to make them work better, just like Shannon said. But... Uh, we like the aesthetics that have been going that way in the past, in the past several years and think this is good and just like to voice our support for it as well. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Anybody else? Nobody? Mr. Murphy, you <coughs> rarely miss a chance to speak. I don't see you coming forward, though. So. <coughs> Nobody else coming forward, I'll close the public hearing. Chairman Lane. Lott, I think you have. I'm sorry, Miss Logan. No, go right ahead. It's your birthday, so you should speak first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good. <laughs> I'd like to remind staff. I'm just here to answer any questions. That, uh, you're setting precedents here tonight. <laughs> Birthdays in the future may be celebrated differently. So. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Logan. <laughs> Mr. Adelot, I believe you have some comments. Yes, sir, I do. And um, first of all, I'm, I'm, I want to you know, express a lot of appreciation for the people who, who did speak tonight and, and, and the fact that they, they, they appreciate a working relationship with the city and my staff. And it's good that when we send something out, they read it and take it seriously and, and get back with us and participate in the process. Uh, they participate in the process because they are stakeholders, and they, they do know the experience of working with clients of working with property and trying to make things move forward. Uh, and we do too. Uh, and we do value that relationship. 
The um, situation is, is I think everybody, everybody that participates in this process values our community. It values the uh, way it has been moving in a very progressive direction. And I think everybody values the, the standards that we've, we've looked at to improve it. Uh, I drive through the uh, Gateway area, and I'm very much awed at the uh, quality of the development and very appreciative that we've been able to achieve it. But, it. but at the same time, I know that what really achieves a good development is good examples. And the Gateway, if nothing else, has been a good example. And that good example has gone into other parts of our community. The good example of the Gateway has been manifested uh, because there was an example and a standard to show people, we've seen good and very positive development on Memorial Boulevard, although there was no standard that required it. Uh, the same way on South Church Street. We had standards in our site plan, but we didn't have the GDO, the gateway, or the design standards that required the heavy brick or required the, uh, the uh, building amenities. So it is achievable without the gateway to standards. It's also achievable without a planned development process. Uh, in the last um, summer, we, we began to look at, with the economy changing, the circumstances of property owners has also changed. People who had sure thing development plans a couple of years ago are not in those kind of situations. And often it's, it's a, a property owner who is not a developer. It's, not, it's a property owner who has no intentions of being a builder. It's a property owner who owns property, who wants to sell it, who really gets caught in the grind, in the mash, in the mix. Uh, what happens, and we saw this with the uh, property known as the Jacobs Crossing, a family wanting to sell the property, uh, but they, to get it zoned, they, they tried to figure out, well, what's the most sure way? We, we want good development. We want positive development. We don't want to create a mess when it's developed. We're not developers. We want to sell it. How should we move forward? The planned development process that was vague, that met their needs to, to be able to, to get a commercial zoning um, wasn't what really passes the muster from a legal standpoint. A, a plan development simply does not work for those people. So what we as staff are recommending to you is with these type of enhancements, what we want to do is to create the, the kind of things that begin to incorporate some of the uh, elements that people have, all, have begun to agree make buildings better. The, a little bit of landscaping at the base of the building, if particularly office buildings uh, or retail. You don't need that at the back of industrial buildings around loading docks, and we weren't going to require it. Uh, we wanted to look at the orientation of buildings. The front of the building should face the street. When the side of the building faces the street, it doesn't look good, and people agree on that, and people have begun to respond to those, that kind of guidance. Uh, we don't uh, want to have the uh, heating and air units that are in a, right out in front where it's going to be something very visible from public streets. Uh, or if it has to be and there's no choice, to have it screened. So that's the aim of these regulations. And Ms. Logan did a good job of explaining through that. Now, one of the things as we begin to write this, we, we went, <laughs> I realized that we went just a little bit too far. The landscaping at the base of the buildings is good, but if you overdo it, you may have gone a little bit too far and not and create a, a, a second problem. And, and, and I have come to realize that after talking with some of the engineers who, who looked at this and we sent it to, landscape architects who do business with us, they said, well, you got a good idea, but you've gone too far. You need, you, need to, you need to come back a little bit. I've not been able to write down what needs to change before tonight's public hearing. As I became aware of it, I felt it would be best to get public input before I tried to write that. So what I'm going to want to do tonight is uh, I want to hear your discussion, if you have any to offer. We've had input from the public. Uh, I want to uh, uh, defer action tonight with the expectation of coming back probably in the middle of January at our work session with some recommendations to change this, uh, determine if another public hearing is needed, certainly be able to get it out to the public. I want to get past the holidays. Uh, my experience at, in planning shows me that this is the worst time of the year to get public input because we're going into Christmas parties, Christmas holidays, events with our churches, e events with whatever, and birthdays. So we want to, we want to get past them to be able to uh, uh, let the, um, I guess, the process normalize and be able to come back with something to uh, address this. Meanwhile, uh, in, in a couple of our, the people who provide some testimony, they, they, they've got a couple of tweaks that they'd like to offer, and I want to, I want to hear from those. Um, in my experience with Mr. Taylor, he does a lot of work down here. He does good work, and I will value very much any kind of uh, thoughts and input that he and his, his uh, cohorts would have. Um, that's what I'd like to offer tonight, and I'd like to hear from you all. Is there anything that you all 
see this as going the right way? Do you agree with what we're trying to achieve? And uh, is there anything you think we need to change in particular? don't hear anything. I think you guys put a lot of work in there, but I, I would like to hear your recommendations on how you would think we need to change it when we come back in uh, January. And maybe you can work more closely with the development and uh, engineering communities and come up with some additional changes to it. So that's very good. Anything else, Mr. Adelot or Ms. Logan? I will be ready probably in the middle of January. Okay. Chairman Lynn, there were a couple of comments I did want to make on this. I appreciate all the work that staff has put into this. I think over the last few years, this body and staff together have really striven to try to raise the bar, so to speak, as to the design standards for our community. But to ensure that that bar was raised, the only vehicle we've had to do that, so to speak, has been with the PUDs and the PCDs. Um, and what we've realized, though, is that that vehicle lacked the flexibility that the development community and our community at large needed in, when the market changes, when community needs and desires change. And I think this is the direction that will allow both to ensure that that bar is raised and still provide for that level of flexibility. There's still going to be times when, when the PUD is, is the way that we need to go, but overall I think this is this is going to be the future of the way that we're able to, to ensure that quality that we need. There's no more comments. Mr. Gilly, would you like to follow that with a motion? Well, Mr. Adelot, are you wanting us to actually not take action on this tonight? Is that correct? That's correct. I'd want you to defer action. Okay, I'd move to defer action then. Second that motion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. We'll move on to the gateway design overlay. We have one item under that tonight. That's the Boys and Girls Club Teen Center, the initial and final design review and site plan approval for 3,133 square feet on 8.55 acres. Excuse me, 8.5 acres zone heavy industrial and GDO4, located along Jones Boulevard and Medical Center Parkway. The Boys and Girls Club of Rutherford County is applicant. Ms. Love. Yes, sir. Thank you. And um, this before you tonight is an initial design review, a final design review, and a site plan if the Planning Commission so chooses to approve all three of those tonight. Um, and at staff's request, we would ask that you consider that um, for a 3,000, approximately 3,133 square foot addition for a teen center located at the front of the building that f as it faces towards Medical Center Parkway at the Boys and Girls Club at Medical Center Parkway and Jones Boulevard. Um, this will actually be um, an addition out into some of the existing athletic fields. It'll be going towards Medical Center Parkway, but of course it's still going to be pretty far back from the road. It's not that large of an addition that it's going to be right up against Medical Center but because a portion of the building, just a little bit of a corner of a building, um, is in the GDO4, that's why it has to come before you under the gateway design regulations. And um, before you tonight, and if we can go to the screen, we have some elevations of what they're proposing for the addition. Um, and you have copies there. We also have color boards up for you guys and also material boards that show that they're proposing an addition <coughs> that will be um, approximately two stories with a slanted shed roof type design that's going to be all brick construction for the addition and will tie in nicely with the existing building. The um, existing building is a brick and metal building and so um, they're trying to tie into that but also really I think trying to improve a little bit of the aesthetic as it speaks towards Medical Center with this type of addition. Um, they've added more windows um, and some columnar vertical features in this to try to provide a little interest as it faces towards Medical Center. Um, and again, the addition is going to be all brick um, addition. Two-tone colors has been passed around. Ms. Ely, I think, gave you the color board for you guys to look at tonight. The site plan, there really isn't that much entailed with the site plan. Um, they're doing very little work. They're relocating a drainage pipe. They're doing a little bit of drainage work and that's really all that's involved. There's no additional parking, no new grading, no new lighting, nothing of that sort. Really just a, an addition right there on the athletic field. Um, and they're also um, um, not uh, adding some foundation plantings there around the base of the building as it speaks towards Medical Center, something we just spoke about. So really those are the only changes that are involved tonight. Um, I would like to let the design engineer come up just for a couple minutes and he might want to add a little bit to it. Mr. Steele from Huddleston Steele and also Mr. Jarnigan, who's the director of our local Boys and Girls Club is here as well. Thank you, Shannon, Chairman Lamb, members of the commission. 
I am Steve Steele, and it's my pleasure to be here tonight, not only as a civil engineer of the project, but also, and probably more importantly, as a member of the Board of Directors of the Boys and Girls Club of Rutherford County. If you have any questions about the building or the site plan, I would be glad to answer those. Um, I do have with me also Mr. Dan Jernigan, who is our Chief Professional Officer at the Boys and Girls Club. And if it would please the Chair, I would like to ask Dan to briefly tell you why we are making this addition at this time. Dan. Well, thank you, Steve. Uh, I think really if I, if I were to ask you why do we need a teen center, I think it's obvious, uh, especially today looking at the newspaper today and the DNJ talking about gangs. And I think every day you open the Daily News Journal or the Tennessee and, and you see articles that talk about gangs. And this teen center is going to be able to provide an outlet for so many of our teenagers in Rutherford County and uh, in Murfreesboro. And that's why the Board of Directors has decided to add on to our existing facility so that our teenagers can have that place where that sense of belonging can be found. And, uh, and we're very uh, pleased that, uh, with the, the project and we're very pleased with what the design is going to look like because we believe that it's going to attract uh, lots of teenagers to come and be a part of this uh, special endeavor. Thank you, Dan. Any questions uh, for Mr. Jernigan or Mr. Steele? I want to thank you for the valuable job and the great job you do for the community and the Boys and Girls Club certainly is a wonderful asset to our whole community here. So I'm glad you recovered from the first tornado very well and <laughs> hopefully better than ever. So. We had to have our own t tornado. So. <laughs> <laughs> Any uh, comments from members of the Planning Commission? If not, we're ready for a motion. Mr. Chairman, I recommend approval of subject to your staff comments. Second. All in favor say aye. Excuse me, uh, I just yes, want a clarification. And that would be for the initial design, final design, design, and site plan approval? All of the above. Okay. It's, in re it's ready for it, so yes, sir. I want to make sure. Thank you for the clarification, Mr. Adelaide. The motion is made for approval and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. We'll move on to plats and plans. At this time, we have four items under <coughs> plats and plans this evening, the first of which is Kathy property. Section 1, a preliminary plat for 11 lots on 13.02 acres, zone commercial highway along Agra Park Drive. Abundant Life Christian Church is the developer. Ms. Logan. And yes, sir, thank you. This is a preliminary plat for an 11 lot subdivision located off of Agra Park Drive in Gresham Lane, known as the Caffey property. You all have seen this plat. Uh, back, state, back to up to 06. It's been out there rolling around for quite some time and um, it just has expired and it has to come back before you again for approval um, and um, they have to meet stormwater regulation requirements with this plat. There's also a requirement that they have certain assessment fees and payments that are re um, required along both Agri Park Drive and Gresham Lane that will be um, necessitated prior to the recording of the final plat which is the next item on your agenda. The preliminary plat however appears to be in good order and we don't have any additional comments other than the comments listed in our um, staff report tonight. Okay. Any questions by members of the Planning Commission? Chairman Lamb, if there are no questions, I move for approval subject to all staff comments. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. The next item is the Kathy property once again, section one, a final plat for 11 lots on 13.27 acres. So on Commercial Highway along Agri Park Drive, Abundant Life, Abundant Life Christian Church is the developer. Ms. Logan. Yes, sir. Thank you. Again, this is for a commercial subdivision, 11 lots. Well, most of it's, uh, let me make sure I clarify that. It's uh, 10 lots are commercial. There's one lot that flunts towards Gresham that's actually RS-15. Um, but the majority of it is commercial subdivision located along Agri Park Drive and all the way over to Gresham Lane. This is the final plat, the preliminary plat that you just reviewed um, and approved. Um, again, it had expired, so it's back before you this evening. Um, there's uh, one change that if you'll notice that they're using 
been named Gethsemane Court for the road name, and that's not what the original approval was. In fact, that was supposed to be the name of the, of the street directly to the south of this, as they were going to have two courts, um, but they decided that that's the name they wanted to use here in Section 1, so that is one minor change since she, since she approved it. Again, this plat tonight would be subject to all of the conditions and approvals um, subject in our staff report, as well as the any paint repayment assessment fees that are required along both Agri Park Drive and Gresham Lane it will have to be paid prior to the recording of the final plat. Okay. Thank you very much. Any questions from uh, the Planning Commission? Chairman Lamb, if not, I'd make a motion that we approve subject to all staff comments. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. <coughs> Next item is Salem Glen, Section 2, a resubdivision of Lot 9, a uh, resubdivision plat for four lots on 13.01 acres, zone commercial fringe, located along St. Andrews Drive and Highway 99, Barclay Salem Partners, LLC, developer. Yes, sir. Thank you. And this is a resubdivision plat that's before you tonight um, at the corner of New Salem Highway and St. Andrews Drive um, at the northeastern corner of that intersection. And it's a resubdivision plat, but it involves more than two lots. Therefore, it's before you tonight because anything in the state of Tennessee involving more than two lots has to be approved by the Planning Commission. There's four lots involved. And this is what is going to be known as the Publix at Salem Glen property um, that they're trying to get started. And they've already received grading permits and land disturbance permits. And um, hopefully we'll be moving forward with some building permits in the beginning of the new year. And the, um, there's been one slight change that you may recall from the site plan that when the redo and the site plan was done is that they eliminated one of the out parcels there along New Salem. There's only two out parcels now, whereas you, there used to be three, and they've made that area into a detention pond, as well as the main Publix lot is being subdivided to allow for financing and ownership um, legalities. Um, that's essentially what will be the public's building will be on one lot of record and the associated shops will be with the second lot of record. Otherwise, the plat's in good order. We just ask that, that the um, before prior to any um, <coughs> signing and recording of the final plat that they submit all the easement documents necessary for common maintenance of access and <coughs> landscaping. Any questions? <coughs> There's no questions. We're ready for a motion. Uh, Mr. Chairman, one question. Yes. Uh, Ms. Logan, a uh, land disturbance permit has been acquired, so they are moving to construct this public? Okay. Uh, yes, sir. Um, they are. They've received their land disturbance permit and grading permit. They um, were in the office today with every indication that in the beginning of the new year they'd like to have foundation permits and building permits to begin construction on the public's building. Good. Thank you. I'll, I'll add this. They've wanted to do the project. It's been a matter of the financing, and they've, um, they're like uh, every other grocery store or big box developer uh, in the country right now. They're having problems being able to work their financing out. I think they have finally got that worked out and are anxious to get started. Any other questions? Not. I will make a motion, Chairman Lamb, that we approve subject to all staff comment. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. And the final item under Plats and Plans is Love's Travel Stops, a site plan for a 1,200 square foot addition on 10 acres zoned. Uh, 10 acres zoned something. What is the zone on that? County Retail, Wholesale, and Trade. Thank you. <laughs> I had a hard time reading that. <laughs> Rutherford County Retail, Wholesale, and Trade. Rutherford Travel Stops is the developer. Ms. Logan, thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, this property is actually located in Rutherford County, but it's serviced as an outside the city sewer customer. Therefore, this addition is something that you all have to review um, as a requirement of their outside the city sewer customer agreement. Um, this is uh, zoned Rutherford County Retail Wholesale Trade. It's an existing travel stop, and it's an addition, a 1,200 square foot addition for a tire service center. They're located on the property. What they're going to do is offer a 24-hour um, service 
for um, 18 wheel truck drivers where they have, they have tires that blow out on the road or they need a fixing or whatever that they'll provide that service for them um, and it is a metal building which is in conjunction with what's existing there on site um, and they have shown an area to be constructed to serve to house and store their tires inside and not outside in a you know in a fenced area they're going to keep the tire storage inside as required in the city of Murfreesboro code um, because it isn't outside the city sewer customer they have to comply with the city regulations and city permits um, and that's pretty much all that we have on this site plan everything else appears to be in good order thank you any questions Now we're ready for a motion. Mr. Chairman, I move for, uh, for approval. Subject to all staff comments. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. That concludes the plats and plans portion of our agenda. Move on to staff reports and other business. Mr. Adelot. Uh, yes, sir. I think most of you have got your training. If for some reason you don't have your training for the year, please contact Robert Lewis. He is anxious to help you finalize your training. That is, if you hadn't already done it, and I know most all of you have, but... Why does he always look at me and you when he I look at all of you. <laughs> he, he looked at me when he said, I know you have. He may have looked at you. <laughs> oh, I got you. <laughs> and that's all my reports. <laughs> Anything else, Mr. Adelot? That's all my reports. Okay, I want to thank everybody for the birthday greetings and everything. With one final comment, I want to say I'm still not as old as Mayor Bragg. <laughs> <laughs> all that being said... This meeting is adjourned. <laughs> <laughs> hey, bye.